researchers! Kumusta kayo? Welcome back to our YouTube channel! This is me again, Teacher Ting May, ang gagabay sa inyo sa inyong research journey. Bago pa lang sa channel na ito, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell para ma-notify kayo sa ating mga new lesson vlogs about research. In this lesson, you should be able to recognize international standard and rules in the conduct of research. Last time, we discussed about the rules in vertebrate animals. In this video, we will discuss about lesson 3 of module 3, Rules in Potentially Hazardous Biological Agents and Risk Assessment Students are permitted to do research projects with potentially hazardous biological agents meeting the conditions and rules described below which were designed to protect students and to ensure adherence to federal and international biosafety regulations and guidelines. The following are the rules for all studies with potentially hazardous biological agents, or this is what we call the PHBA. Number one, prior review and approval is required for the use of potentially hazardous microorganisms. This includes bacteria, viruses, prions, prions Arikatsha, fungi, and parasites. Recombinant DNA or RDNA technologies or human or animal fresh or frozen tissues, blood or body fluids. So these are the examples of potentially hazardous microorganisms. Let's proceed to number two. An affiliated fair, SRC, an IBC or an IACUC must approve all research before experimentation begins. The initial risk assessment determined by the student researcher and adult supervising the project must be confirmed by the SRC, IBC, or IACUC. Next, number three. Experimentation involving the culturing of potentially hazardous biological agents, even the BSL-1 organisms, is prohibited in home environment. So when we say BSL, it stands for Biosafety Level. Yeah, these are examples of caution and biohazard and hazardous biological agents. So let us have number four. Research determined to be at biosafety level 1, BSL-1, must be conducted in a BSL-1 or higher laboratory. The research must be supervised by a trained designated supervisor or a qualified scientist. The student must be properly trained in standard microbiological practices. Number 5. Research determined to be a biosafety level 2 or BSL-2 must be conducted in a lab laboratory rated BSL-2 or above. So commonly limited to a regulated research institution. Number 6. Students are prohibited from designing or participating in BSL-3 or BSL-4 research. Number seven, laboratory studies designed to, to culture known clinically significant multidrug resistant microorganisms or MDROS must have a written justification for usage and be conducted at a regulated research institution laboratory with a minimum of BSL-2 containment and documented IBC review and approval. Next, number 8. Insertion of antibiotic resistance markers for the clonal selection of bioengineered organisms is permitted. However, 
Students may not genetically engineer organisms with multiple drug-resistant traits, nor intentionally select for such organisms through passage in culture with the intended purpose of investigating the pathology, development, or treatment of antibiotic-resistant infection. So these are also examples of genetically modified organism. Number nine, extreme caution must be exercised when selecting or subculturing antibiotic resistant organisms. Studies using such organisms include uh, including BSL-1 organisms that may have originally been exempt from prior SRC approval require at least BSL-2 containment. Number 10, the culturing of human and animal waste, including sewage sludge, is considered a BSL-2 study. Number 11, naturally occurring plant pathogens may be studied not cultured at home, but may not be introduced into a home garden environment. Pathogen. What do you mean by pathogen? When we say pathogen, it is also known as infectious agent, which is biological agent that causes diseases or illness to its host. So this is also included and considered as potentially hazardous biological agents. Number 12, all potentially hazardous biological agents must be properly disposed at the end of experimentation in accordance with their biosafety level. For BSL-1 or BSL-2 organisms, autoclave at 121 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. So this is an example of autoclave. Use of 10% bleach solution. 1 is to 10 dilution of domestic bleach, incineration, alkaline hydrolysis, biosafety pickup, and other manufacturer recommendations are acceptable. When we say incineration, this is a waste treatment process that involves the combustion of orga organic substance contained in waste materials. Number 13. Research plan summary must undergo subsequent SRC or IBC review approval. So always remember that any proposed changes in your research plan or research summary, project summary by the student after initial local or affiliated fair SRC approval must undergo subsequent SRC or review and approval before such changes are made and before experimentation resumes. Next, number 14. The following forms are required, of course, since we are dealing with potentially hazardous biological agents. What are the forms that you have to complete? First, the checklist for adult sponsor, which is the Form 1, followed by Form 1A, the student checklist. Form 1B, the, the research plan or the project summary and approval form. And you also need the Form 1C, which is the Regulated Research Institution Form, but it is only required when applicable only. And then next, Form 2, only when applicable also, it is the Qualified Scientist Form, followed by Form 3, the Risk Assessment, the PHBA Risk Assessment Form, the Form 6A, and Form 6B, which is the Human and Vertebrate Animal Tissue Form, of course, this is all. This is just included for studies involving tissues and body fluids, or body fluids rather. Okay, there are three uh, topics also in this lesson that you should know: additional rules for projects involving unknown microorganisms, additional rules for projects involving recombinant DNA, rDNA technologies, additional rules for projects with tissues and body fluids including blood and blood blood pro products the reason why it's really important that you have your designated supervisor and your qualified scientist you cannot perform and administer such experiment without 
the help of your designated supervisor. Okay, let us now proceed with exemption studies. So these are exempt studies, meaning to say there is no need for SRC pre-approval requirement. Again, no SRC pre-approval required. What are those? Student researchers and adult sponsors are required to refer to sections A, B, C of this section to review additional rules for projects that involve unknown organisms. So, yun na nga sinabi natin kanina. Okay, the following types of studies are exempt from prior SRC review but require a risk assessment form 3. What are those? Okay, we have the archaea and protis. So, studies that involves archaea and protis. Studies that includes composting, fluid production, and other non-culturing experiments. Next, commercially available color change coliform water test kits. Of course, these kits must remain sealed and must be properly disposed because it's very dangerous to others if you do not dispose this correctly. Next, studies involving decomposition of vertebrate animals such as forensic projects. Studies with microbial fuel cells, these are also included. And also, the following types of studies involve BSL-1 organisms and are exempt from prior SRC review and require no additional forms. What are those? Studies involving baker's yeast or brewer's yeast exempt in RDNA studies. Next, studies involving lactobacillus, bacillus thuringiensis, nitrogen fixing, oil eating microbes. So the oil eating microbes are really challenged in the Arctic. And algae eating bacteria introduced into their natural environment. So, remember that this is not exempt if cultured in a petri dish environment. Studies involving water or soil microbes not concentrated in media conducive to their microbial growth. Studies of mold growth on, I on food items if the experiment is terminated at the first evidence of mold. These are examples of mold growth in food. And then another one, studies of slime molds and edible mushrooms. So this is an edible mushrooms and this is the slime molds. Studies involving E. coli K-12 and other strains of E. coli use solely as a food for C. elegans that are performed at school and are not subject to additional rules for recombinant DNA studies or use of antibiotic resistant organisms. Aside from exam studies, we also have exam tissues that no SRC pre-approval required. The following types of tissue do not need to be treated as potentially hazardous biological agents. Number one, plant tissues except those known to be toxic or hazardous. Next, we have plant and non-primate established cell lines and tissue culture collections. Example are those obtained from the American type culture collection. The source or the catalog number of the cultures must be identified in the research plan and project summary. So these are examples of plant and non-primate cell lines. Next, fresh or frozen meat or meat byproducts obtained from food stores, restaurants, or packing houses, and pasteurized milk or eggs. Next, we have the hair, hooves, nails, and feathers. Another exam tissues are teeth that have been sterilized to kill 
any bloodborne pathogen that may be present. Next are, next are fossilized tissues or archaeological specimens. So these are examples of fossilized tissues. Next and last is also the prepared fixed tissue. Resources of information are available as a separate section at the end of the document. So our reference photos credited to Google Images and you can also read and study the ISEF rules and guidelines in the, through this link. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Sana ay may natutunan kayo. For our next lesson vlog, for our next lesson vlog, we're going to discuss about the rules in hazardous chemicals, activities, and devices. Okay, stay tuned on our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tin May. Ang kasama nyo sa inyong research journey. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates and lesson vlog in research. See you on my next vlog. Bye!